Holy Spirit to bring us into understanding. That's what he does. You can read scripture, you can read scripture. But without his help, without his guidance, you'll just be reading like reading a good book. But what he comes when we give him when we give him what is due and we step back and say, we need your help. I need your, I need your help. Show me, reveal yourself, reveal your word, reveal the word of God to me. It's a beautiful thing. Thank God for Living Water Church. I thank God for his faithfulness to Living Water Church. He's been good to us. And that's something that over the years that I look at is to see the faithfulness. We just sang that song all our lives. But in the season, in the decade plus since I've been here, I've seen the goodness of God. Those moments for my life when I look and reflect upon the goodness of God causes me to have an attitude of gratitude. That's what it should do. We should have times of reflection. We should take the time to reflect on what the Lord has done. Let me pray. Well, Father, we do. We are grateful. We are grateful. And this night, Lord, we do. We just lay it all at your feet. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your help. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you that even as we speak that you'll help to bring things to my remembrance, things that, Lord God, that will cause your people, Lord God, to have a fresh illumination, a fresh understanding, new direction, Lord God, of what you're calling for and what you're doing in this season. We're grateful for your presence. And I just speak over this time here tonight, Lord God, I just speak a blessing over every heart, over every life represented here tonight, Lord. I thank you that even right now that God, that you would begin to make our hearts ready to receive the Lord God, that where the busyness of the day, things that have gone on, Lord God, we just put those things aside right now and we say, have your way. Have your way. We thank you for the angels of the Lord that would be around this property, in this room right now. Lord God, thank you for their protection. Thank you, Lord God, for how that they'll help to govern even in this moment as well. But we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for this beautiful gift. And we thank you that, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord, in this end time. Hallelujah. We thank you that, Lord God, that we will come out and we will be victorious and we will see the power and the authority of your word come to pass. And so we just bless you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We're good. Praise the Lord. Well, I was part of my starting out testimony is that yesterday when I was coming to the church, I thought I was coming for one thing, but with God, it can be another thing. Because God always has a plan for our lives. It's whether or not we'll make ourselves available or will we keep our lives in a place of sensitivity to where we can be directed by him. Amen. So as I was coming to the church, I thought I said, well, let me come and do and saw the little weeds in the in the in the cracks and I thought I could put some stuff on that to kill them and get that out of the way but then the Holy Spirit began to deal with me in regards about the back about the shed and so as I was going there, I thought well I don't have my I don't think I have my key because I had two separate key rings and I did I have my key but as I began to dig in my bag I saw that I had my key and I said oh okay so as I opened up the door to the shed I saw it 
and it was just in disarray. And as I saw that, I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak to my heart. And this is what he said. He said these words to my heart. He said, would you help me to declutter this right now? Well, when, when you have your mind and you have your own little time slots, you're thinking, oh, because you're looking at what you're looking at and it's a lot. Amen. There's times that we're seeing things and they are, it's a lot. But without his help, without his guidance, guess what happens? We become overwhelmed. There's an overwhelming thing that comes upon us when we see clutter. And so as I stood back, it wasn't a thing of, of being critical or judgmental. Why? Because I'm a part of this is my house. This is our house. And there's a level of responsibility that we're all called to in this house. Amen. Well, as I begin to take things out, I begin to pull things out of the out of the out of the shed. Probably things that I even saw that I had to take responsibility for. I even looked over in the far corner. There were paint cans. They weren't paint cans that had been there by someone else. There were paint cans that I had there. I'm taking responsibility. So, as I begin to pull those things out, the spirit of the Lord was so strong. It just began, it, it began to build more and more and more and more as I was touching things, as I was looking at things, as he was directing me and showing me underneath the tables and, and different things. And you know, you see all these big cobwebs and all these different things every one of those things guess what it represents something it represents something to the believer as a son of God when I saw that I had to take responsibility and look and think for myself this is my house but at the same time the spirit of the Lord began to speak and he said in the midst of all the clutter there are things of worth that are hidden in the clutter. And what happens is that we, we speak about the things that we see or things that are done in the natural. It's a type and shadow of things that we'll, we'll see in the spirit as well. In 1 Corinthians 14.40, look what it says. That all things be done decently and in order. There's an order in the kingdom. There is an, let me say it again. There is an order in the kingdom. The war that we are in in this day and time, this end time war. Listen to my heart, family. This end time war that we're in. What is the enemy up to? What are one of the many things that he's up to? Is that we, as a body of Christ, will not fulfill our purpose in this land. Will not fulfill it. He doesn't care how he has to go about it. But he does not want us to fulfill our purpose. The spirit of clutter is a strong spirit why why what does that spirit do it, it does it does a variety of things and one of the things that it'll do it'll bring like a, a a demonic shroud or hypnotic thing upon your life to where you're becoming weary things that should not be normal will now become normal Spirit of complacency will come in there as well. And guess what you'll do? You'll find yourself just in what well, like I call it a robotic flow. You're just doing things, but we're not really accomplishing what needs to be accomplished. When, when God comes in, when he comes in, He's trying to take us like when we were into the book of the bait of Satan these last several weeks. What was that book doing? It's not that you didn't read no, and didn't know some of those things. It's not that you didn't know some of the scriptures. But guess what happened? He was revisiting 
And he was causing Pastor Pam for there to be a right now in this season, in this moment. Do you understand that's the goodness of God? God never misses anything. And if he's preparing the church to be a church that will be bright, that will be vibrant, that will be prepared, that will be equipped, these things have to happen. Clutter. In John 10.10, 10, we know the scripture. People can quote it backwards and forwards. We know the scripture. But let's read it. It says, the thief does not come. Look at that. He does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. When the enemy has, in, in his strategies, in one, of, in one of his strategies, in the stealing part, if he can steal precious time, if he can steal precious time from you, then you will not be an effective believer. You'll not be effective in your movement. Why? Because, you're, because your timing in the natural and your timing in the spirit is all out of order. It's not in sync. It's not in the right flow. That's why some, some watches cost more than others. <laughs> because of the components. <laughs> then he comes to kill. Kill the dreams. Kill the, kill, the, kill the hope. Kill your destiny. I always thought, why doesn't it say steal, destroy, and kill? I always thought that. But steal, and then he comes to kill, and then he comes to destroy. These are strategic plans of the enemy. It's in writing. And so much of the times what's happening is that we see and we've got the word in us, but we're, we're out of sync, we're out of flow in our relationship of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we can also have natural clutter, that that natural clutter is a representation of what the Spirit was going in spiritually, that there's clutter in us spiritually as well. spiritual clutter do you know if you think about it that if you were going to invite someone over your home let's just say let's just do it this way let's say that like back in the day people don't really do it too much anymore but you all would probably remember back in the day it wasn't anything for someone just to say hey guess what I was in the neighborhood and I stopped by What would you do if you just had someone from the church stop by your casa unannounced just because they were led by the Lord? Would you receive them in or would you hold up for a minute because instantly you would be quickened of the condition of your home? Because if someone came into your natural home and they saw the condition, let's say it's all in disarray right bachelors could be different forms and strains of that louis pasteur would be able to work with on the dishes <laughs> laundry here there socks in the fan rotating Odors that have not even been able to be named. Would you welcome a person in? When we have spiritual clutter in our lives, one of the things that's happening is that we really are aware of it. The Bible says that every man and woman knows what's in their heart. Everybody knows the condition of their heart. Everyone is really, really understands what's going on with themselves. So nowadays you see on all kind of different channels that there are people that, have, that are bound by hoarding and whatever. But that hoarding didn't just start one day. That was over, was like the word you use, never was a progression. That thing began to happen 
and somewhere because we aren't at times walking in the spirit realm walking living a life of intimacy with the Lord that we see these things come in and they're very subtle they're very subtle and we begin to it's a compromising or or we just begin to say well I'll get to that one day one day I'll address that you know what I mean cartoons they sweep the stuff under the rug you know what I mean I'll get to it but the Bible says the little foxes it's the little foxes the little foxes that destroy so that means that there's a strategic flow in this thing do you see the strategy in there things that we deem as as not very significant or insignificant those things become now mountains the Spirit of God is trying to equip the church He's trying to get us into a mature place so that we walk in, in, in levels of awareness with his help. Because why? Because his word is very plain to us. I had to admit when I was in the shed, there was moments I, I just started weeping. I just started weeping. When I was in there and I was looking and I was thinking, this is a part of who I am. This is a really a part of who I am. That's why you saw over at the shop, I started to clean at the shop, even though COVID or whatever. But guess what I was doing? It was a representation of my life not being in sync not just because Wayne wasn't there to help at times and whatever. You know, we had a team, but, you know, we had a, a, a plan and how we did things. But, but when you're moving and you're moving and you don't allow yourself to take a step back and regroup. There's times you've got to step back and regroup. And you've got to take a hard look. And there has to be some total transparency with yourself. When there's no total transparency... We're no different than, than the addict this way or the addict that way. Until that person admits and says, hey, I've got a problem or I've got an issue or I need help. They'll just continue to do their thing. And guess what? Will we probably, will you go to heaven? Yes. But will we fulfill? Will we really be the mature people that can help other people? I always often believe and ask myself, is one of the reasons why will not be bold and confident in their in their conversations in their in their walk with other people is because they they've got so much clutter that they live with shrouds of shame that they live with this shroud of 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 darkness that they don't want to admit I, I begin to really, I really begin to thank God for Living Water Church in this season this way. You know why? You know why? It's because I saw the amount of people. And I begin to see God, do you, you love us so much. There's a, it's right now just, a, it's, it's a small number. But these people that can come week in and week out, these people are faithful. These people are faithful, God. And the plan and the plan and the call in their life is huge. It is no small thing. But yet this is a season of equipping. He's equipping us. And, 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 and in, we can't have prayers like this. God, we want you to do a work in us. You cannot ask the king of all kings to do a work in you. And not expect for him to come in the way that only he can come to complete the work. There has to be a season that we say to ourselves in our, in our small knit family right now. Because guess what? The masses of people are coming. They are coming. And sometimes we don't see how the setup of the kingdom. You can't have as much prophetic words and utterances that go on that have been birthed by the, by the heart of God and not 
know that he's going to fulfill what he said. He's going to fulfill it. Is will we be ready? That's something that we miss sometimes. Are we ready? I'll just give you a simple number. If 50 new people came in right now from all different walks of life, would, be, would we be ready? So what does that really mean, ready? God's cleaning us up. In that preparation, don't you see it? Can't you hear it by the Holy Spirit? Can't, doesn't that bear witness with your heart that he's cleaning us up? It's a good thing. It's a time of preparation. It's a, really, and also it's another level of his extension of love. He loves us so much that he will give us time to do the things that are necessary so that we won't be overwhelmed but we'll be equipped so as I was out there cleaning a new purpose happened in me something something changed in my heart and I began to really thank him that and you man, you love me so much that even in my own movement you can you can stall me you can you can you can redirect me so that I can I can be in timing of what you want to want me to see and as as I was leaving out of there I I felt the presence of cleanliness I, I felt this presence you know and I thought God help me that help me to exhibit that in my day-to-day -day walk as I'm, as I'm dealing with people that someone would be able to see upon my life I can see that he's not that learned of a man but I can see he's been with Jesus I can see that he's been with Christ there's something on his life that speaks volumes that's what God wants to do with all of us. There's no big eyes and little U's. We've heard this. We all, or all had to come to the foot of the cross. And I'm learning. I'm learning. And I want to learn. I want to learn, Dr. Bob. I want to learn. I want to learn what it means, the season of submission in this, this time of what he's doing. I want to learn. I don't want to be stiff-necked. I don't want to be rebellious. I don't want to be that way. And I'm not going to be that way. I'm not going to be that way. I believe, and this was a word I didn't get a chance to really run by Dr. Bob and Pastor Pam. It's not something way out. But when I was in prayer coming here, the Spirit of the Lord began to deal with my heart that he said that there was that there was a person that's been coming here that goes here and that been contemplating like leaving that there's been this whole this whole thing and and this is how this like clutter when you when you when you if we have clutter clutter does not allow you to have spiritual clutter does not allow you to have clarity it brings in confusion and when there's confusion then the enemy is able, because what does he do? He mimics. He'll, he'll try to mimic the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? He'll try to represent himself as that almost as this is God speaking because he, he sees the flow in the understanding of your walk. You see what I mean? If that's not so, how, did, how was he able to ask Adam and Eve, hath not God said? If he does not track, if, 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 his, if his demonic spirits do not track believers, then how is he able to know unless we open up our mouths? But he can see by our flow, our movements, what, we, what, we're, giving, what we're giving precedence to. You see what I mean? Those things are part of strategies. If you're in a war, 
Would you not want to know what your opponent and how he moves? Would you not want to know his weaknesses? Would you not want to know where he's vulnerable? You see? So, so in this season, what the Lord is doing, he's bringing this awareness. What did he do? He helped me in the book with the bait of Satan. I didn't know that I was going to be dealing with some of that stuff. It was happening in my life while I was reading the book. I was ready to go to war. I was. I was ready to go to war on, on, on a few people. I'm serious. But when I'm reading the next, when I get into the chapters and I'm seeing my life, I'm seeing the situations that I'm dealing with right in front of me. Did you hear what John Bevere, this is a strategy of the enemy. Did you hear what John Bevere said that he began to, to buy the lie which caused him to look at his pastor a different way? You remember that part? Begin to think he, he could see all these different things. He could see, yes, all the faults and different things. And it caused him to have an area in his life that he could no longer receive because he was so caught up with other things. But until he began to address those things, then he had redirection with the help of the Holy Spirit. Do you see the Holy Spirit wants to redirect us tonight? He really wants to redirect us. We're not bad people. This is not what we're saying. We're talking about maturity. We're talking about growth. We're talking about getting our, our spiritual muscles in order. I'm going to get in shape. When I hold my arm up in years from now, I don't want to see the flag of, the flag of Mark Greer. Oh, how does it wave? Okay, as we say, sway, segue into the next, but it's truth. I believe this is what the Lord, I believe this is what the Lord put in my heart. I've been, I didn't know fully that 10 years ago that the le level of opportunity and training that I was getting all the time when I would be able to hang out with Dr. Bob. I didn't understand it. I knew things were happening. I mean, I knew that he was taking time for me. I knew that. You know what I mean? I, I, I would see him do it. I want to, I want to, I want to, that, that to be one of a strong attribute in my life. You know what I mean? Is that to take time for people, to be sensitive enough to recognize that at that moment, at that minute, God ordained that thing. And if I'm prepared, if my heart is right, guess what I can do? I can pour in. And it might not be so much as what I say, but if I make myself available. And guess how that touched me tonight? Because on Instagram, I saw this little thing. You know how they have the little pages that flip, you know, with people's... Well, yeah, you might not. But what happens was that I saw a family member of mine post on there. And it was talking about suicide prevention. And when I read it, it, I was quickened that it's not by chance they're posting that. You know what that was? Because it says, it said in there, would, would people, two, two of my close friends or family members, would you, was, I think you call it copy and paste this, that, that I would know that someone's listening. Do you see that we're dealing with in this day and age that there are people all around us that are dealing with suicidal mindsets, suicidal thoughts, ready to give up, ready to give in. And many of them are believers. We just heard was it somewhere. Would you say that the, the church, the Bobby Crow, Pastor Crow, they had a, a, a altar call. They had a special service for people that were dealing with depression. You see that many of these things that we're dealing with, the spirit of clutter, naturally and spiritually, brings a depression. And oppressive spirits begin to 
deal with the hearts of believers and they begin to come hope become hopeless and, and weak and they're showing up but on the inside there's a lot of turmoil there's a lot of things that are going on and I believe God just wanted us to spend a few moments at the altar I was listening I always listen to Pastor Pam and I listen to Dr. Bob here's what he prayed earlier watch this it was so beautiful he said Lord praying for mental health and physical health that's what he said mental health and physical health sometimes we need healing we need deliverance from certain things we need to recognize there's certain things that are holding us and and we we just allow them to, we see them as normal a normal way of thinking normal way of doing things but God wants to eradicate the clutter out of our lives if we'll give him permission we have to give him permission and here we are tonight I know that I'm I know that I love each and every one of you and I know each and every one of you have been kind and nice to me over the years and I take it as an honor because I know what I see in the spirit world right now in this level of war is he's banking that there we will be ignorant people ignorant of his devices ignorant of things that are in front of us and we'll just go on we won't be equipped God doesn't send any soldier into war ill-equipped you don't do it in the natural that's why boot camp is what it is you got your boots on. Pastor Pam's got her fatigues on. She's got her, she's got her <laughs> desert storm pants on. <laughs> but I believe that. You know, there's times in services where we say, hey, well, you know, just let's bow our heads and, you know. But I believe that this is a time that there's no shame. We've got to break those mindsets. You know what I mean? That if we're dealing with the thing, we need one another. We need to know how to stand beside one another. We've been through war. We've been through a heavy war. I was talking to you earlier. We've been through a heavy war this past winter. It was a heavy war. It's calling you all at times. You coughing and battling and it was crazy. But we were in the war. But he sustained us. Here we are. And why are we here? To fulfill his purpose I'm grateful to the Lord Jesus for his goodness I'm grateful that he has a plan always has a plan is where we come along and walk in it and be confident that he's he has us but I just think that the Lord would want us to if there's anyone that that really has a specific something or, or in, in your life that you've really been battling with for, for a long time, something that, you know, maybe, maybe even, you know, we, we might have to come along and someone and, and help in a home. You know what I mean? And, and help to, to address some things. We might. I don't know. I don't think, I think this is a time of transparency. What do we, we have nowhere to hide. What are we hiding from? We've got everything to, to run to, to be victorious in it. I did that for years. I was a good major player in having, the, having a good smile. And every time someone says, oh, I'm okay. I'm good. You good? I'm good. You know, that's the saying in psychiatry, isn't it? I'm okay, you're okay, or whatever. Instead, they say you need a checkup from the neck up. But I know God has called us to be victorious. That's what I do know. If I don't know anything else, if I never said another word, I know he's called us to be victorious in him. As well or not, do you want the victory? Do you want to be a part of the victory? Thank God for you guys again for going out and putting the mulch out and all that. You know what? What did that do? You see what that did? That brought a presence for those that are going by. 
those that will come, they, they look, man, that looks fresh. That looks inviting. That looks good. There's, there's something going on. You know, they're taking care of the property. We got a lot of property. It's a lot of property. Maybe one day again we'll stock it full of fish and I can show you guys how it's really done. Look at John Curry. I even saw in the back there was somebody's lure. So I thought, I thought that was so powerful. There was the bell. There's the bell that was back there. I don't know. Is that from this church? Oh, from Daniel's? We need to do something with that bell. That bell needs to, I don't know. We need to do something. But it, had, but it has a scripture. What was the scripture on it? I finished the race. Yeah. Paul finished the race. Will you finish the race? Will you finish the race? That's a question that you should ask yourself. Will you finish it? He started a good work in you. Right? He wants to bring it to completion. So there's a yielding. This is a season of yielding. I'm going to yield. I know the wars that I deal with. And sometimes I just want to be able to say, hey, I'm going to be vulnerable. Man, I, I, I need you to stand with me. Would you agree with me here? You know, I've dealt with a lot of family issues. Things that have broken my heart. Things that I had to come to even today. It has to happen this way. It has to happen this way. You see. But, but I need you. When someone in this house tells me they're praying for me. And I, I feel like they just. I've won the lottery or something. I, I do. I get pumped. I'm like thank you. Thank you for praying for me. And I've been praying for all of you all. I've been spending time intentionally crying out for each and every one of you because you, 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 you're, you're precious. You're precious. Remember how precious you are to this house. Start spending more time with the Holy Spirit. Setting aside a time whether it's early morning or whatever, but get, we, we need more intimacy with him. It's time to grow and build and get prepared. Let's stand. Did you have something? So you got to pay attention to the mother of the house. This is a... <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I kind of, I was a little bit blown away when... Um, Pastor Mark mentioned about he used the word mimic and during the worship service I heard that exact I heard that the nations mimic what America does and what America has and I was thinking about that and I felt like the Lord was saying and what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to mature the body of Christ because he wants the babies to mimic the believers in a godly way. He doesn't want them to mimic our bad habits. You know, and it and I I do think about that what you were saying about, you know, I mean, we have gone sometimes to people's houses or knocked at the door or something and you know, they don't want to let us in because it's a mess. And it's like, you know, I just think, Lord, we don't want the, the new generation and the new ones to come in and they find us living in that cluttered kind of way. Now, I'm not talking about when you're doing construction or when you're cleaning or tearing something. I mean, sometimes when you're doing a deep cleaning, you got the whole thing tore up because you're taking a room and you've tore it apart, you know. But I, I know that God has been talking to me about don't have your life cluttered. Get rid of stuff. Because the more stuff you have, and it's exactly like what Pastor Mark was saying. But the more you have, the more you have to take care of. 
And then you have a greater responsibility for that. And you know what? And when you aren't getting it done, then it starts weighing on you. And then you think, I can't get, get through it. I can't get it accomplished. And it starts bugging you. Doesn't it? And so I think that the Lord is just saying, get the clutter out of the way because we, we all got things to do and I want you to be ready and I don't want you to be like have your life cluttered up where, you know, you can't function because you're always thinking about the stuff that you need to do that you didn't get done. And so, you know, and I, I was thinking about the mimicking and... I know that I talked to the worship team earlier about this, but it kind of fits in here. And I was thinking, you know, they're having these um, riots in South Africa right now. And one of the things that is taking place is that they are, like, they're, they're tearing up the ATM machines. They're getting in and getting inside of them and taking the money out, you know. Well, where did they learn that from? They saw it on the news because that's what took place in the summer in the United States, right? That's where they got the idea. But you know what? Then I look at Cuba, and I see those young people out there, and you know what? What are they doing? They're mimicking the, the idea that they want to live in freedom like we do. And so I think it behooves us that we folks, we have got to really be praying about all the situations. And you know what? And God is dealing with us about cleaning stuff out and just getting getting our lives in order so that we are profitable at what Pastor Mark said, that we fulfill our destiny. And you know what? People have been home. They have been, this COVID thing, Pastor Bob and I were talking about this tonight. COVID came in, and I'm telling you, that thing has brought nothing but chaos into the United, in, into the world, actually. But you know what? It was also the time when people were in their homes, and you're seeing that, like, a lot of people, they started, like, repainting a room or cleaning up this or doing that because they saw what they had been living in and they didn't like it and so I think all of us just need to do a you know it's kind of like we're all on this meter right now of checking ourselves okay do I check the box <laughs> you know Lord is there something I need to tackle is there need something I need to get done is there something I need because Lord you want me to fulfill my destiny and so I just want to encourage you you know um, let God you know speak to your heart and just you know whether it's spiritual or it's natural if it's your car, if it's your home, if it's your where you work, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, and, and I want to say again, you know, thank you to everybody starting to, you know, been sprucing up stuff outside because it looks beautiful. And um, so anyway, I think God is, he's got some agendas right now. And we're just needing to try to fit into them. Praise God. Thankful for the Word of God. Thankful for the ability to share the Word of God. And you said something that, you know, to me, I, I heard a prophetic voice speaking to me when you said this. Um, and I believe that it's something that is for these people and others. And that's this, that when what pouring does is it starts pouring is for drinking and so if as we look at what's happening now across america in the in the churches and there's a lot of people that are thirsty and they need to be drinking but if there's nobody pouring they can't be drinking and so i heard i heard the spirit of the lord say it's time for us to learn how to pour because if we'll learn how to pour in this day not p-o-o-r but p-o-u-r if 
we can learn how to pour, there's people that will be able to start drinking. But the next thing to that is, if we'll learn when to pour, then people will be able to drink as well. So I heard the Holy Spirit say that, and with the context of taking the time, taking the time to recognize that it's time to pour because somebody is drinking or wants to drink. And if they, if they, nobody's pouring, then they won't be able to be drinking. It's, it's a deep, very deep, very, very deep. Yeah, it's, it's really, yeah, this is, the, the Holy Spirit gave it to me and I'm just like, what? You know, I'm overwhelmed because it's way deeper than it sounds on the surface. just feel like some of you know I don't know who I'm not going to look around at all but you know what I feel like there are some people here that you've kind of been battling depression and part of that thing of depression that you have been battling is the chaos that you are living in and the Lord is saying that when you would start to tackle the chaos and the clutter and some of the stuff that you have been putting off and some of you have been putting off some things for quite a long time, the Lord says when you would get rid of some of that and take care of it, the depression will start to leave you. Hallelujah. Because then you will not be overwhelmed by the circumstances, but you will say, oh, I got it done. Look at it. It looks so good. It's kind of like when... when the weaves were being pulled out here and stuff. You know what? They started at one end and 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 worked. The people were working their way around the building and stuff. And and it, it's all it, they got it. You know, but you got to start somewhere. And so the Lord is saying, start somewhere. You know, even if it's just a little thing or five minutes a day or something like that. But start because the the thing it is just like what um, Pastor Mark was saying. How does it's a strategy from Satan to keep you under the ugh, the weightiness of like of like oh I can't accomplish this I can't get it done I can't get through it I can't do it and it, the Lord is saying you know what with Him nothing is impossible Amen. and you will be able to get through it. That's true, and, and, and we need to not prematurely celebrate. In the process, you can have some moments of victory. You know what I mean? You can have moments of victory, a celebration, but don't get comfortable in that because it'll cause you to become stagnant in, the, in celebrating. You see what I mean? So as you, as you advance, you can celebrate and thank God as you start to see some clarity, see some, see some other parts of the natural and spiritual room. You know what I mean? That you didn't see before, but don't get caught up in that just celebration in that. It'll it'll cause a wrong door for you to stay stuck. You got to continue to keep advancing and keep yielding to him. You know what I mean? For the victory. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that right now, Lord, we thank you for this moment and for this time. And we receive this season that we're in. We thank you that, Lord God, that your hand is not too short to save. And even right now, mighty God, over each and every individual that is represented here tonight and their families, we break the bondages and the flow of clutter, Lord God, the things that, Lord God, that have, have stifled, the things that, Lord God, that have held back, the things that have caused fear, the things that have caused depression, the things that have caused people from not advancing and moving forward and trusting you. We address them in the spirit realm right now in Jesus' name. And we cancel every lie in Jesus' name. And we thank you that, God, that when we break the thresholds of our natural houses tonight, that, Lord God, that it will be a time, Lord God, of reevaluating and yielding our hearts unto you, Holy Spirit. Will you direct us? Will you show us even things that seem to be sentimental? God, the things that need to be uh, jettisoned, they need to be cast out, they need to be dealt with in the natural as well. So we thank you. We 
welcome your leadership. We welcome your guidance. We welcome this new season, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you that as we move forward in you, that Lord God, that it will cause our lives to be even more vibrant, even more uh, receptive, and Lord, even more outgoing, Lord God, as we deal with Lord in the public, in the marketplace. And so we thank you, Father God, for this moment. We thank you, Father God, for this season. We bless you. We bless each individual on their way home, Lord God. And we cancel every form, Lord God, of accident, every form, Lord God, of distractions. We cancel it right now. And we thank you, Father God, for your clarity upon our hearts and upon our minds as we go forth in your name. Amen, amen.